Hey, good morning from Southern California. Uh, I'm going to rant a little bit here about ligatures, the ligature, okay? Um, just a couple of days ago, uh, you know, I, and I, I scan a lot of media, and I'm, I'm not going to ping on anybody or name any names or criticize anybody, but there was, uh, there was talk about uh, if you keep the top you know, the top screw loose. If you have a two screw leg, right? You keep the top screw loose. It allows the reed to vibrate more freely. Keeping the top just tighten the bottom one, right? Just, just finger tight the bottom one. It allows the reed to vibrate more freely. That is nonsense, all right? Here's the part of the reed that vibrates. I put a little line on it for you. Pretty much just the, the, the tip. You know, it flutters, and I've heard from other players who have played for much longer than I have that it, that it actually flutters uh, up and down and all around, kind of like a bee's wing, okay? All right. Uh, so, so I want to just dispel that. Oh, by the way, my ligature? I'm glad you asked. Okay, first of all, this is a Rico Graftonite uh, tenor sax mouthpiece. Rico Graftonite. It really works for me. I like it very much. I've... Uh, I've had every mouthpiece that you can possibly imagine, and I've spent a lot of money on ligatures too. Um, my gosh, I think I you know you, you, seventy-five uh, to, to to a hundred to two hundred, you know, just for for ligatures and a thousand for mouthpieces. You know, now there's a new kind of a ligature that's you know that that slides on. You know, it's a tube and it fits over the, you know. Uh, uh, there's so many different kinds and and I, I just I, I want to just kind of go backwards and just say this was seven bucks and it came off the rack at Allen's music in La Mesa I've been using you know this for a long time and I play professionally um, one of the things that you can you can do with your mouthpiece right now it's a great exercise is just to grab it and let's play a scale yeah really yeah just with a mouthpiece it's gonna sound horrible but Small children will run away and dogs will will bark, but let's uh, let's give it a shot, right? <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? This is wind control and embouchure control, okay? Ligature didn't really help me do any of that, but let's undo the top screw and in fact, let's just take the damn thing out. Here we go. It's, uh, it's not doing anything at this point now. Here we go. Let's see if it's better. I could be wrong, all right? But I don't think so. That's about it. All right, so uh, I, I know a lot of you have gone out and bought big-time ligatures and spent that money. And, uh, and if, if uh, you know, I know even more of you have... Uh, dozens of mouthpieces and you know we kind of play mouthpiece roulette ligature roulette all that sort of thing read roulette oh my god and you know it can go on and on and on so hence the rant this morning I saw that about keeping the top screw loose and I thought you got to be kidding really come on what look it holds the oh I put mine on upside down yeah you were asking why is it on upside down well you know, less, less, you know, constriction on the reed, but I'm sure it doesn't make any difference. In fact, let's turn it around. I kind of got used to having the screws on top. Well, let's just, let's just play devil's advocate and turn it around. Here we go. I turn it around and put it on the way, you know, this is the way Stan Getz head is, right? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Tightening them up. Let's see, let's see if anything changes. <gasps> Ready? Sorry, dogs. No, didn't make a difference at all that I could tell. And I think that, you know, even if it did make a difference, gosh, I've got some itchy nose things. Sorry. Even if it did make a difference, even if loosening the top screw made a difference, it's so fastidiously minute that you're not going to notice it. You're not going to hear it, okay? Uh, and, and now, you know, there's a great argument here among those who, who uh, make and sell or have, or have spent money, or have laid out big cash for, you know, major, 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 you know, ligature expenditures, they said, hey, well, hey, it made, made, it made my sound better. It made my sound better. I'm not sure that it did, right? Take a look. Go back in history. YouTube is full of all kinds of videos. And just go back and take a look at what Stan Getz had on his, uh, his mouthpiece. Just take a look. 
Take a look at the league. It looked a lot like this one. Yeah, take a look at what John Coltrane had. You could hear every note that man played. Every note that man played was beautiful. Look at the lig he had on his standard issue that came with the Autolink uh, Super Tone Master. Uh, who else? Uh, Paul Desmond. Uh, he, he laughingly would, would tell people uh, he, when they would ask him what mouthpiece he'd say. The other one that came in the in the case with the horn. Don't know if that's true or not, but ligature very common, right? Back when I started, I was about ten years old. And, you know, we, we didn't have a huge uh, range of choices of mouthpiece, right? Um, you know, the old school stuff was there. Not a lot of it, though. But most of us just played, you know, we played the piece that came with a horn and the ligature that came. And, uh, you know, uh, we tried to make our reads last as long as possible. Whole summer, if you could. Uh, but uh, that's a different story. Um, what had not happened back then was the industry had not caught up with the whole weekend warrior concept of, you know, let's keep selling these sax players something. Let's keep creating media that tells them they need this or they need that, or this will be better, or this will make better sound, or this will blah, 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 right? And, and good for them. You know, you buy one sax or three, and you buy 15 mouthpieces. Have I done that? Oh, I've spent $1,200 for a mouthpiece. I'm not lying. Anyway... That's what has caught up with the, is there is an industry now around uh, saxophones, mouthpieces, ligatures, and, and reeds, and all that sort of thing. And uh, that didn't exist back in the day when the guys, you know, what do they call Stan Getz? The sound, right? Uh, he made it with a very common mouthpiece. I think it was a Link, maybe a, maybe a Tone Master, something like that. Hard rubber mouthpiece. Uh, but Letty Pickett's had the same mouthpiece for years, right? It, standard lig. I mean, I mean, you know, guys that really play, that have really played and really have engineered that sound that you and I have come to love and know and want to sound like, have very simple gear. What they do that you didn't do, or I didn't, or couldn't do, perhaps, is that they played more. All right, they played all the time. They played their horns all the time. Okay. Now, a lot of you aren't professional sax players, and I get that. You're here to learn, and you're here, you know, to get better and to have a good time with your horn. I get that too. That's so important. And I'm, you know, you don't, you don't have to go pro to be a sax player. Just have a good time with it, right? And you know, many of my adult learners, uh, you know, have jobs. They got things to do. You know, they still, they still punch a time clock. Nothing wrong with that. But you got to go to work, and then you, you know, you're also the guy that you know gets the oil changed in the car, and uh, you, you got to walk the dogs and feed them. And uh, you have families, you have grandkids, you have kids, you have wives, you have responsibilities and things that take you away from the horn, okay? So I'd like you to look at something in a whole different way. Think about it. All right, we've spent eight minutes now watching me tell you that, you know, your basic ligature is just fine on your basic mouthpiece as long as you play more, okay? You could have played Blue Bossa three times in eight minutes, okay? So why don't you think about it in terms of, instead of blocking out a chunk o time, like 30 minutes or 45 minutes or whatever it is, think about grabbing your horn when you can and playing a song, playing it through a couple of times, put it back down and go back out, mow the lawn, come back in, whatever. You, you see what I'm saying here? Instead of, you know, thinking, well, I gotta practice, I gotta practice. No, just play. Pick the thing up as many times during the next uh, six or seven or eight days as you can and play. Get back to me. Tell me how much better you sound. And also, this, this exercise is, is, is ridiculously easy. You just, again, loosen up your embouchure, speed up your air as the notes get higher, and you'll be able to play a scale. Um, better than me, I hope. Let's do it again. We'll close out with this beauty. Wait a minute. Here we go. A song. Imagine how many people are going to want you to play happy birthday to them on your mouthpiece. Just think about that. All right. Hey, have a great day. Thanks for allowing me to rant and rave about ligatures. I would love your feedback. Private lessons, DaveGoodSax at gmail.com. Just leave comments in the you know spaces below. All right. Take care. Have a great day. And again, thanks for being here.